If you guys remember a while back, uh, there was a lot of leaks for Pokemon Sword and Shield well before the game came out. And this sparked a lot of controversy with the models and, and all this stuff. And there was already some controversy from Nintendo's own release material. Uh, but it got worse and worse as the leaks came out. We eventually knew what the entire DEX was long before Nintendo ever revealed it or the games came out. And we knew that there was a leak. And we knew that the Pokemon Company and Nintendo uh, had discovered who they thought was the leaker. But they hadn't really given us any details other than they would pursue legal action. Well, we seem to be at the conclusion of that legal action. And Nintendo has not only concluded the legal action and the Pokemon Company. Uh, they have publicly stated where this person came from. And that's very unusual because usually in cases where leakers are caught and say they do come from the media, which did happen this time around, uh, so someone with access to a review copy got busted uh, for leaking, they don't usually call out the entire outlet. Now, I have a theory on why they are calling out this outlet, uh, but we'll get into that in a bit. First, let's get into the official statement. Now, we have the statement and then we have a response from the official website. Uh, that was accused of this stuff, uh, but let's get into the Nintendo statement and then we'll go over to the website to see uh, what they had to say. So, uh, Nintendo Life has here, building up to the release of Pokemon Sword and Shield last year, certain elements of the game, including Pokemon, which hadn't been revealed, were leaked online. Images and information spread like wildfire, and it was painfully easy to accidentally stumble across unreleased content ahead of the game's launch. Back in November, it was rumored that Nintendo may have caught the person responsible for the leaks. And the following month, we learned that the Pokemon Company was taking legal action by filing a lawsuit. Today, Nintendo and Pokemon shared a joint statement on the matter. So, Nintendo and the Pokemon Company agree on this statement, and you can read it in full below. The joint statement from Nintendo and the Pokemon Company. In early November, Nintendo identified a number of photographs taken from the gameplay that revealed multiple new and unannounced Pokemon from Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. These photographs have been posted online and Nintendo together with the Pokemon Company, quickly identified the person responsible for these leaks. They took immediate action. These Pokemon were leaked by a reviewer for the Portuguese website F Nintendo, who had received an early copy of the game for review purposes. Both he and F Nintendo failed to handle confidential material, resulting in a clear breach of the confidentiality agreement between Nintendo and the media outlet. As a result, Nintendo will no longer work with F Nintendo. Nintendo will always protect its intellectual property and brands. Leaks hurt not just Nintendo, but the thousands of employees who worked hard to bring games to the market and the millions of fans around the world who look forward to news and surprises. To the surprise and delight of players through new experiences is a shared passion for Nintendo and the Pokemon Company. We will pursue all avenues to preserve surprises for players of future Pokemon titles. Now, we aren't sure what legal ramifications have come out of this. Uh, we do know that, you know, Pokemon Sword and Shield here, they've sold 16 million copies. Um, not just a box here, the game's in there. Uh, and what happened is somebody uh, at, a, at a media outlet, and I, I used to work at more traditional media outlets, Zelda Informer. Uh, we used to get review copies of Zelda games at Zelda Informer back in the day, which has been since merged with Zelda Dungeon. So I'm sure Zelda Dungeon could get access to review copies should they uh, want. Um, I have gotten review copies uh, for places like Amnesia in the past. Um, I've worked at traditional media outlets, even, even a brief stint at Nintendo Everything. And what's interesting when you get review copies is they don't make you sign an agreement before you get the review copy. At least they used to not do that. Maybe they do that now, uh, but they used to send physical copies in the mail. And uh, when you got those copies, along with the copy would come basically a list of things that you agree to just for having that copy. Uh, it's interesting because I always thought it was weird that they would send you a review copy without making you agree to the terms before they send it. Because if you have no intent to ever agree to those terms ahead of time, you're not going to send the game back. So you're going to probably do something you shouldn't be doing with it. And uh, the terms would always say things like, you know, you, you could only, uh, here's when you could do write a preview, here's when you can release a review. Uh, in your preview, you can only go through this part of the, the game. Uh, these parts of the games are not allowed to be, you know, not allowed to be talked about at all. Uh, you can do X amount of video clips of the game up to this point. Uh, you can't show this, you can show this. Um, it, it'd be basically a list of restrictions. Even when the review came out, sometimes there would be restrictions in the review. Uh, if you released it on that date, the restrictions are lifted the day 
the game comes out. So if you want to wait to release your review the same day as the game release, then you don't have to worry about those restrictions. Uh, but if you know, sometimes there were restrictions on the review just because they wanted to protect, say, the ending of the game or or something like that, which is perfectly makes sense. And I don't think reviews necessarily need to spoil everything about a game to be effective. Um, there are reviews that do that, but I don't think that that's required. So most of us reviewers didn't view it as a handicap. And I did use these review copies to review some games, also to create some walkthroughs to get ready to go on day one for certain Zelda games, stuff like that. So I have I have uh, literally direct knowledge of how Nintendo handles review copies of games, at least here in the United States. Now, it's different now because now they, they do all digital codes. And, and the last review copy I got from them was Twilight Princess HD, and I got that uh, as a digital code. And in the email of the digital code contained all the NDA information. So it is implied that you agree to this information for them sending you that copy of the game. I always felt like it should be something you sign ahead of time or the outlet you represent signs ahead of time, but uh, that's never been the case. And I don't know how other companies handle their review copies of the game. Like I got a review copy of Epic Mickey that was much the same way. So um, the thing is, is this outlet probably got this, did this email with the digital code. Um, and then they picked who, you know, it usually is sent to um, either the individual reviewer or it's sent to the uh, editor-in-chief and then they can delegate who's going to be doing the review, who gets the copy, etc. Um, and what I find interesting uh, is that uh, in all of this is that we've had leaks in the fore from media outlets. We have had specific members of the media uh, end up leaking things and the person's never named nor is the outlet by Nintendo. Uh, this is because one, the outlet usually isn't completely blacklisted, uh, which has happened in this case. Uh, and we'll get into that in a bit, but beyond that, um, they usually aren't this savage about it, but I think, uh, one reason why they're being this savage about it is the Pokemon company is much more restrictive of their stuff than Nintendo themselves is. And the Pokemon company has done things like shut down fan meetups using Pokemon imagery at bars. Like there was a meetup uh, before PAX that was supposed to happen some years back and the Pokemon company completely like banned that from happening even though it didn't have any negative impact on Pokemon. Uh, but it didn't matter. They're that protective of their IP. Uh, so Nintendo has to be complicit with Pokemon's desires, the Pokemon company's desires. Uh, but beyond that, um, F Nintendo released a statement. Let's get to what F Nintendo had to say on this. Now, they are a Portuguese website, so I did Google Translate this, or will be Google Translating this. Um, and uh, here's what I had to say, and for some reason it's repeated twice. I don't know if this is a thing that happens... Um, I don't know. I, I'm going to read just both statements in case there's some differences here. So it says, to our readers, in early November of 2019, a series of photographs of a screen displaying images of several Pokemon at the time, not yet announced from Pokemon Sword and Shield games, were shared online. We want to take this opportunity to openly admit to our readers that F Nintendo was responsible for the online dissemination of some of these photos. Nintendo offered us a copy of the game for analysis purposes with clear embargo guidelines, which with, with which we agreed. That copy was sent to one of our employees who improperly shared the aforementioned photographs after the investigation F Nintendo ended its relationship with that employee. Our relationship with Nintendo Portugal dates back to 11 years, but our part of this is undue sharing is a clear violation of the confidentiality agreement between us and, as a result, a total breach of trust with Nintendo. We recognize that this is unacceptable to violate the embargo guidelines that we have not handled the materials for analysis with due care. We fully respect Nintendo's decision to cancel the confidentiality agreement between our companies and as a result of this breach of trust and to accept that we will no longer receive Nintendo products or be invited to participate in its events. We want to apologize to Nintendo and the Pokemon company as well as our readers for disappointing them after Nintendo. So after Nintendo confirms they are blacklisted by Nintendo. They will not get media access to things. They will not be invited to events, um, review copies, all that stuff. Um, Nintendo dropped the hammer. I don't really know why this statement's made twice, but that doesn't really matter. The point is that F Nintendo fully admits to it. Uh, they admit they are blacklisted, uh, and that's a huge deal. It's almost a death knell for a place like F Nintendo. Now, I did some research into F Nintendo, and it turns out they're a relatively small website. They get about 8,000 views or so per day. Uh, to put this in perspective, my former outlet that merged into uh, Zelda Dungeon back in the day. So Zelda Informer back in the day would get usually between two to three million views per month uh, for our, us to get review copies. Uh, Gamnesia would, would, would get over a million. Um, places like Nintendo Life get over six million views per month. Uh, so 
it's a very tiny website, but Portugal is obviously a smaller country. Uh, and this was the largest, from what I can tell in my Google research, Nintendo uh, fan site on uh, in, in Portugal. So I guess it kind of made sense that for Nintendo of Portugal that this might be a go-to website for review copies and events for fans in Portugal. Even though the viewership is so small, that's still potentially thousands of sales that F Nintendo could um, generate. And it's interesting because here, we literally in one week passed more than 8,000 views. So we are like, you know, 4x as big as F Nintendo in general uh, per month as a YouTuber, and we don't get review copies. Of course, they, they handle video reviewers and video people differently. Uh, there are outlets much smaller than me on, on YouTube that actually get review copies. Why I get denied, I don't know. Maybe Nintendo doesn't like me. <laughs> It's weird, too, because I have a history of reviewing their games, and I've always followed the NDA and never leaked anything, but um, it is what it is. I, I honestly think that, at this point, um, the hammer had to have been dropped uh, because Nintendo doesn't care. They're such a, a, a tiny place. The Pokemon company cares greatly, and they want to issue a warning to any other journalist in the world, whether you're a YouTuber or, or, or whoever you are that gets review copies of games. If you leak our games in the future do not be surprised if we drop the ban hammer someone who works for ign leak something <claps> bye bye ign we're ejecting you and i think nintendo had to be harsh like this because they are so tired of the leaks the pokemon company especially is tired of leaks you guys remember pokemon sun and moon like the entirety of pokemon moon was leaked online in rom form and people were literally playing the game worldwide before the games came out clearly nintendo wants to avoid this situation in the future and that's really all I have to say about that. You let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I am Nintendo Rubble Dance from Nintendo Prime. Be sure to drop a like on this video if you like it. Share it to your friends. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon. And if you're wondering, yeah, the lighting is a little dark today. I actually changed the setting on the camera uh, so I wouldn't be um, auto-focusing as much and I'd stay in focus more. But in doing that, it's like the lighting uh, that the, the camera sees has changed. It's a little, it's a little weird. I, I got to work out some kinks here. Um, there is a ring light I want to attach to the camera itself that might fix some of the shading, especially when I wear my hat. Uh, but I, I don't want the blue face to come back. You guys remember old blue face Nate? I don't want that blue face guy to come back. And there's a setting I can, I can put on there that makes it so I look perfect, but then my face is blue. Um, and that's not the way it works in the real world. In fact, this is probably more closely to what the exact lighting looks like, but uh, whatever. I am Nintendo Rebel Gents. This is Nintendo Prime. I'll catch you guys in the next video.